banned away or if it's picked away. But here's the thing too, last time we saw a lot, he went 0-3 and 0 on Syndra versus Team 8. Mm. His biggest performance was actually on Ziggs, where he had a 10-4 and 9 performance. Oh, well, we'll see them. And that was a loss too, that he had yeah. a 10-4 and 9. That's true. They actually had a, a pretty rough series against teammate earlier on in this uh, in the challenger bracket. We're going to see what these guys can do. Fix and bans coming through. Zillion dropped away from Law Pro. Alistair dropped off a of support daddy and Anda here, and kind of seems to keep moving forward. One of the fun things, of course, we haven't seen these teams play this patch yet. This is 4:14 now. We have seen the Chinese play after the LPL on 4:14. So you guys might have seen some of those games, but these are the first Western games in this patch. So. I think Zillion was 100% pick banned last night. Yep, in the LPL. So also Zillion is a flex pick here between Lot and Toy. Mm -hmm. So if they pick it up early, they can still either throw it on the support and say, all right, we'll counter you mid lane, or they'll throw it in the mid lane after they see what Denial brings them in. So a little bit of a good move there by Denial to take away that extra X factor that could throw them off in champ select. I definitely agree. I think it's a really good choice to get rid of that one. Looks like the Rai's going to drop out as well. And Nidalee, not going to be allowed for Haunts there, but we've seen his Dr. Mundo be amazing. And now we're going to see what we go for. Looks like the big three top lane bands, Maokai, Nidalee, and Alistair, all went away. And Nunu right away picked up for Heaven Time. Yeah, I was talking with you about this because all these junglers are kind of falling by the wayside, at least not as popular. Evelyn is only very popular in more challenger matches when people aren't as vision-oriented or as yeah. team-coordinated. So right now, top junglers are things like Lee Sin, Nocturne's being played a lot, Jarvan, Kha'Zix, and then Nunu's like right behind that for control. Yeah, and it's going to be a control game for Team Law Pro then, if they can get themselves out of the landing phase nice and safe, and they're going to be in a pretty good spot. We'll see what the Nile Esports goes for themselves. Maybe I'm wrong on this Cinder being contested because we're not seeing her just yet, but I still feel like that's the comfort pick for both these guys. Yeah, the thing is, do you want to pick up the Syndra? Do you want to pick up the Cassidy? Do you want to pick up the Orianna? It's 414 I think the Denial will most likely wait until they go to last pick to pick their mid laner here. Yeah, we're going to see if that ends up being the case. Looks like Nami with the hover right here. I actually like her against Nunu because it's very easy to disengage his like really weak attempts at walking at you. And it's instead Denial setting up for the best bot lane they can go for here. The only... Yeah, I mean, I guess there are two kind of support bands in this one, but Cognami, one of my favorite bot lanes here. Yeah, and the thing is that Morgana is such a prevalent bot laner right now. She did take a hit to her ultimate damage and to her black shield, yeah. but it really doesn't put her down at all. The Dark Binding is still as powerful as it was before. Yep. And against Nami, Nami still kind of counters Morgan Lane. So having that combined with the Kog'Ma really takes care of his early game. True. Honestly, yeah, it's, it's it's just a wonderful lane. It works in all of these cases. Kogma, one of the best mid-game AD carries as well. So you have this like really great level nine power spike with Trinity Force that um, should let Denial have a pretty good mid-game here as well as late game scaling. Corky does have the chance to lane bully him here. I think that will be the pick for signature. Um, back, remember him playing two years ago uh, at the season two regionals for North America was when I last remember casting him. Uh, I remember him really good at being good at the champions like Corky here. So. Corky Thrash going to try to battle that 2v2. And he's been a really big Jace player, too. His most played is That's Jace true. currently. I think he plays AD carry Jace every now and then. Be excited if he whips that one out just because. But these are very serious games. If you lose here, you don't fall into a third, fourth place match. You fall true. completely out of the tournament and out of your chances of making it to the LCS. Right, exactly. I mean, the thing is, though, we've seen teams, just to get on that topic real quick, we've seen teams run crazy stuff. Uh, one of my favorites is Dragonborns back in spring 2013 with the Soraka Nidalee bot lane. They won games with that one, and they were an 8th place team, so uh, sometimes that crazy stuff does work out, and it's just up to you to figure out what's going to be there. The Nile now to make the next few choices. We've seen both Botlings and Anunu, so really n neither team has shown their strategies yet. Like, you don't, like, tailor your team necessarily around the fact that, well, we see a Kog'Maw and a Corky now. Like, that's, in a lot of cases, a wash. Yeah, the only thing you can really, like, kind of infer from this is that what they want to do bottom is push them out early and possibly invade the jungle with Nunu. But that's kind of Nunu's MO, and you'll see that coming if you're Denial Esports. But here on Denial Esports side, they took the Kog'Maw for the scaling. They took the Nami to take care of some of his early game and then late game disengage. Yeah. And now they're saving their last pick as their mid laner, which I thought they would do because yep. I talked about how skilled Lot is. Up against Nubby, who is the playmaker of the team and the shot caller, you want him on the most comfortable champion he can be on in a lane matchup. Because if you get him a losing right. matchup because you pick something early, there's so much more pressure on that player. That's a good point. So they are going to set up uh, for a matchup here in the mid lane. Good call on this one. And Denial have now shown their hand going for a late game strategy here. Dr. Muno in the top lane, Kha'Zix in the jungle. And it's going to be all about them getting out of the laning phase and having a really damn good 35-minute team fight. Yeah, the 
Kha'Zix jungle is something we've been seeing more and more of. He fell yeah. off for a bit when the evolutions were kind of swapped around, but now he's back when people realize W Max is really, really strong. Mm -hmm. And then people will evolve the E if they have really good lanes they can gank for, or yeah. they evolve the W if they're going for the skirmishes. Well, we'll see which one we have for in this one right now. Uh, there's mediocre ganks available. Nami lanes can be all right, but against Porky Thrash, I feel like maybe not so much the case. Yasuo blind pick for the mid lane here of Lod and Shivana top to fight Mundo. Now, six months ago, this is a very common top lane matchup. Basically, you try to bully out early with Shiv, maybe get a Ruin King, and then go for there. Yeah, we have not seen a Shivana in a good while. Yeah. As Gragas came out, Lulu, Kale, then it was Maokai, Alistar, mm -hmm. and now we're kind of going back to those roots. It's true. Ironically, with Maokai being banned, we're going back to the roots. But you know what? That's fine. Fizz going to make his maybe appearance here in the mid lane. And we've seen troll picks before. Sticks, they hovered Poppy for most of the timer, and that wasn't actually picked up there. I do like Fizz against Yasuo, though. No, Kassadin does come through. This is 414 Kassadin, so 20 second Rift Walk timer for the, the mana cost to go back down. Well, also, the damage, too. So uh, if he can yeah. get more Ws. The thing is, is though, that a couple patches ago, we nerfed the timer, or I guess the cooldown of his W. Right. So the fact that these two coincide with each other, I don't get as much mana back, but then I use more mana, or at least have that consumption timer exactly. on for longer, yeah. is really kind of a big kick to him. So we'll see his first 414 cast, and I remember seeing, though I might have missed her from the Chinese playoffs, and W Pooh Bear is going to play that champion. Again, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of late game, and I don't necessarily know what's going to keep some of these lanes afloat, though, because every single lane is dominant from LawPro. Yeah, LawPro have a lot of bullying here. You can go into the jungle with Heaven Time, you can create havoc. Yasuo is really good early. One item is extremely strong with Static Shiv. Corky, very big bully. Then Shivana over Mundo will overpower him very early on. Right. And then when you hit six, it kind of goes even. Then they both just kind of bully each other. But there's a ton of scaling here for Denial. So it's really on Law Pro to make those early game moves and take advantage of their comp. Because if they don't, they're just going to get outscaled. But here's the thing. Seika on Kha'Zix. Yeah. Kha'Zix is really good throughout all stages of the game as a jungler right now. So if he can make very early game plays and then start snowballing even one of those lanes, it could spell disaster for Lol Pro. That's true. I think the jungle matchup is kind of the one I want to watch the most for who makes the plays. Again, I expect the lanes to sort of passively just get better and better for the blue side. But yeah, you talk about playmaking being available. And also, I find it hard to kind of, I don't know what the right word for it is here. Basically, new new jungles, I think, are very interesting. And they're, they're very different in the way they play around the game because they don't have the best gank pressure. But you put them in a lane and good things happen regardless. And so I want to know what exactly Heaven Time can do. Well, here's the thing. I talked about all of Denial have scaling lanes, mm -hmm. and then there's the new new on the other side. The person who's going to upset these scaling lanes is going to be the Kha'Zix, Seika. If new new if Heaven Time just goes into the jungle and keeps Seika down, keeps mm. tabs on him, steals a buff from him, it's going to completely upset those early game and basically make it so that Kha'Zix has no lane pressure. If Nunu's chasing Kha'Zix around the jungle, yeah. what's he doing? He's not ganking the lanes. And all these lanes are going to win naturally by Law Pro, given something doesn't happen early. Well, that's going to be the case then. If Heaven Time can keep tabs to everyone, goes ahead and puts some aggressive trinkets down, goes through the mid lane. Yeah, he has his own ward too, so he's looking for an early ward to place on somebody's buff. We'll see what we got here. Denial looking to maybe put a lane swap together here. And going all the way down, putting an aggressive trinket right by this turret. Boop, there it goes. Got seen coming down, and they do ping it. So this is basically the obvious, obvious tell that these guys are looking for a lane swap. But Denial recall back and hoping to mind game this one. Yeah, but Lol Pro are inside of their blue buff right now. Yeah. This could be really bad for Denial. Unless they would they not play have seen right. Nami, right? No, they would not have seen Nami just yet. I don't think Trinket's conceded into that brush. I feel like Stixay and Support Daddy can make it to the bot lane without getting seen, but I think their mind game's not going to work here. I, they're trying to basically like yeah. counter swap, but they're going to get a two on two, which they don't want. Yeah, they do see each other. They've shown themselves a little later, so that making a lane swap now would just take too many resources to pull off. Mm -hmm. So they're going to go straight at each other, and that is actually beneficial for Lol Pro because they have that lane that's going to win a little bit earlier if you land a hook. Otherwise, you're just going to get poked down. But look at this, though. This is actually a nice... Uh, it ultimately works out the same in both cases here, but both uh, teams got aggressive buff starts, despite the fact that they could have been fought against, um, kind of because of these sort of fake lane swap movements that uh, Law Pro wasn't even trying to look at this left-hand side jungle, but of course, same thing for Law Pro. They just went all the way over to the blue buff, and no one's going to stop them. So blue buff starts, pretty safe openings, and we're going to have uh, a teleport advantage briefly for Anda as Hanser is forced to TP into his own lane. Yeah, he's stuck around 
and help that leash really, really, really well. And now we're going to see they're just going to kind of swap the buffs over, take each other's reds. This bot lane, though, these lanes are going to be very aggressive from Lol Pro very early on to try and just upset and tilt them in their favor because they have to push this advantage because there's no way they're going to outscale. The only saving grace for them in the late game is Shivana or Thresh setting up Lod if he's in a really good spot and has kept Nubby Pooh Bear down. The one thing that can help as well if Nubby Pooh Bear is kept down as well is that Stixay can be pushed around as well by a Shivana. The Blood Bowl of Shivana is going to make a kind of Cog's life really difficult, who honestly doesn't have a lot of peel for himself. Nami can try, so that's the one thing also we can look at is maybe Hanser puts his game on his back, or Lod can do it himself, but we'll see. Nubby Pooh Bear so far holding pretty equal in the mid lane against Lod. Heaven Time grabs his red buff for himself, so jungler so far unmolested. Oh, Lod though. A little far up. Slow's gonna miss, so is the tornado, and nothing much happens. Nudie spotted by a trinket as he wakes his way towards the right hand side. He's gonna, as you talked about, wants to maybe screw with Seika in some way. I mean he stole his wolves and he left the rest of it up. So he has to clear that out on Seika's side. Right now, it's just kind of kind of going to be very unaggressive, but that's in denial's favor. Yeah. If nothing happens, it's okay, pretty much. Yeah. And the funny thing about this matchup too is it is actually in Kasten's favor. Like you wouldn't oh. think that it is, but it is. I played it a couple days ago, and I played it like weeks before that too. But every time, Kasten just bullies him around. Cooldown on right Q is very very low. You get into base contact with him. You're able to W for some extra damage. And the fact that Yasuo casts his uh -oh. E so often gives you a lot of force pulses. Oh, no. But maybe we're going to take a little bit of damage there. Rebo's going to land as well. Puts the slowdown and disengages pretty nicely. Only took damage from Nunu there. Two Ice Blast and a couple auto attacks. Nope, Seika coming around the side here. Zigtr hit by Bubble. Ooh, Exhaust goes on as well. There's the Valkyrie down. Flashes out as well. That is a summoner spell lost. Actually, two summoners, sorry, both of them flashing away for the Exhaust. Yeah, and now Zygnature has no mana available. He has about one Phosphorus Bomb left. And Stixay and Sport Daddy, pretty healthy. Yeah, uh, we are seeing Nami run out of mana a little bit now. She's out of mana potions as well, so maybe Low Pro can wear through this with one more hook, but yeah, you're hook right. Can do it. The 2v2 so far going okay, though, and uh, does slow down and restore it. And Heaven Time's going to be like, hey, are you going to stay under your turret? Because Shivana's going to dive you. This is Se risky. Seika's coming too, but he's going to be late. He's slow. And does not going to take a whole bunch of damage. Heaven Time pulled aggro. Now Hanser does the flash on in. Should be able to get the kill, but without flash, can he get away? Looks like he will escape the last turret shot. And what a good dive there. Anders should run right. And that's going to be the first blood to lol pro exactly what they want to stay above this scaling team. They have to push this, but here comes Seika. Oh, uh, some good damage in Haunter, and oh, oh no, he pulled aggro. turret aggro with the W, gets a kill back. That's kind of nice, but unassisted, and is behind. Sometimes the burnout does that to you, and yeah, Anda, uh, he is behind. He's down in CS, but man, that was just going to help him out a tiny bit, but he didn't even get an assist off the back of it. So one thing that would help as well is the fact that Hanser does not have his TP back up yet for another 30 seconds or so. And so he's going to miss an entire wave under his turret as Anna pushes that down. Six seconds hooked up. Blade in as well. Good Phosphor Bomb. Summoner heal used to stay alive. Damage not coming across to Zignature. But now it's kind of a Summoner spell lead uh, for Law Pro in the spot lane. Then I'll have both of their flashes to the... Ignite and yeah. heal, so it's kind of... I would personally prefer to have Ignite and heal, because it does more in a fight. And it's like rather have Flash. That's true. In terms of just damage, like Flash does no damage. No. You reposition no. yourself to make you it. Dodge a Fossil Bomb and a yeah. Hook, I guess. I guess. But yeah, like, in it's two on two, I would generally rather be in Law Pro situation right now. Okay. But I've, again, it just... Oh. If I get ganked, then I'm screwed, but hey. <laughs> you just play get, better. You just get lanterned out. You just hope that Batoy has got your That's back. That's the goal, right? Like... That's why I was like, oh man, it's going to be so hard to gank bot lane. Like, Kha'Zix might not have much to do here down, down on that side, because, yep, Flay and Lanterns and Valkyrie. And you can see the priority that they put on the Kog'Maw Nami first pick, because look at Stixay. He's even in CS with the Corky mm -hmm. at 6 minutes and 40 seconds in. Yeah. A lot of the time, Corkies will just start running away with the game here, try to lane bully you out. But the Nami with the sustain and the extra poke definitely helps him out here to go even. Absolutely. I mean, I really, again, I really love that bottom lane. The extra healing lets you sort of stay afloat in what are otherwise bad matchups like Corky versus Kog'Maw. And it's on, basically then it's on you to dodge the Patoy hooks. It's on you to be uh, not hit by the skill shots of the enemy support, whether it's Braum, whether it's Thrash, whether it's even Morgana. Um, and so far, honestly, so good for Denial. Ah, uh, the Pink Ward. Making sure that they don't get invaded. One of my favorite Pink Wards, by the way. 
and the new new is gonna have nothing to do with this blue buff. Oh. Wow. So actually a big thing here. Seika, level six, Heaven Time level four. Oh wow. Because Heaven Time went up top and he ended up splitting experience, but then Seika came up and he's like, I got a solo kill for myself. I'm able to roam around the map. Heaven Time's using a lot of his time to just clear some camps, but also put wards down, so he doesn't have as much pressure on the map as Seika does at the moment. Because Seika's been kind of playing it safe. He has been, and and honestly, that's reasonably okay. I mean, he got that one good counter kick in the in the top lane, and you mentioned the uh, uh, the level disparity there. I mean, some of that is bought by the fact that And uh, should be a little bit behind Hanser here. Um, that one wave denied to the turret notwithstanding, I feel like that should still be a lead that Hanser is going to hold, and you can see he's still plus 10 CS because of it, so uh, the leads are in different places, kind of. thing is that both junglers will hit 6 off of their second buff here, so Heaven Time will be in a good spot. Seika doesn't really have a good time window to push the advantage of having level 6 and evolved wings, so that it doesn't really mean all that much in the grand scheme of things, because if he shows up to a lane against level 4 Nunu and he's 6, yeah. big disadvantage. And there's going to be Evolved Wings, by the way, here for Seika, so... be all about looking for the fights. And it is the W Max. Yep, the W Max. So good at clearing camps. And the extra bonus damage to minions, then multiplied by the intake of your Spirit of the Elder Lizard, mm -hmm. you heal so much. Well, oof. So far, Patoy has not been landing a lot of hooks right now. So Signature, Patoy, that bottom lane. Same level so far, good. Harass coming down from Cox. This is 414 Cox, so the R damage nerfed a little bit against champions. And the and the Void Ooze just looks even bubblier. More it's disgusting. So pretty. Ugh. And gross at the same time. It's great. Heaven Time walking by, but Seika's here. They're both have their ultimate. Six to seven. But Fox Seika comes off down. Support down. He gets hit by the hook, comes in as well. Hits another box wall, and here comes the engage. Time needs Lancer repetition. comes out. Signature does not chase into that one, though. A great absolute zero, and Rockets pick up one kill. Seika's got almost nowhere to go, trying to get away. Oh, Flashes so out, but Signature gets the double kill. Now, will they chase? Heaven Time does not want to keep going on that one. Looks like Stixe. He's going to get out safely, but two kills now for the Corky is pretty big. That could be Dragon. The reposition of the AoE slow from Heaven Time flashing using his ultimate was perfect, and they will go straight for a Dragon here. You kill the jungler, you kill the bot lane AD carry, pick it up for yourself, because Laud, he knew that was coming, he shoved the lane out. Beautiful stuff, man, and Team Law Pro 4, man, the Dragon, no contest. Okay, the junglers actually pass each other, and they're well aware of each other's existences in this bot lane. Hook on the support daddy into the box wall. Slow on top of slow. Heaven Time uses all he gets bubbled, but then the big one picks it up. And the biggest thing there is that Seika didn't do a lot of damage because he was too worried about the new ult at the absolute zero. But here we go, a fight in the jungle, three on two. Also coming around, and on the chase as well. Nubby Pooh Bear does have plenty of mana if he wants to keep chasing. Lot not gonna take some damage. Exhaust is on, yes, and it's everybody else as well. 3v3, great three man Yasuo ult! And that is two people picked up, and a forced to flash away, and Law Pro have just found a lot of advantages. The last breath was so good there, he waited on it. The early game damage, you don't really have that burst from these champions that Denial has just yet. And if somebody sticks by you, Kha'Zix isn't gonna get that extra burst. And the fact that he has W max doesn't make him that great in these little just pick people off in situations. Also starts it off with a really good ultimate, but then they buy time, they kite backwards, they wait for Nunu to get to the fight, and then they re-engage it. He has a steel tempest. Three oh no. Three stack there, and then he gets it off. But man, this bot lane, TP comes in too. Sticks they left an orphan to support daddy, goes down and now and a force to run away there. Patoy is gonna on the chase. This might not have been the TP exactly that Dr. Mundo wanted. He's gonna go down. Zig now four and zero in this game. Sticks they not really able to fight back either. What a gigantic lead for Law Pro. And we talked about this mid lane here a lot. 100 CS, he has 22 over Nubby Pooh Bear right now, and he's 0 0 and 2. Lod is just such a skilled player. Every time we see him, we're kind of like, he's the new saving grace of Law Pro. I mean, he's been on this team since he was swapped even before that, because he was on 80 carry. Mm -hmm. And now, people just can't find somebody to fill that void for him. Signature might be the person 4 0 and 0. Ready yeah. to step up. I mean, the Law Pro have swapped their bot lane around so much this split. And this is the first sort of signs of life we've been seeing from these guys. I got to say, even way back when, um, that first gank, that double kill we saw initially in the bot lane, was because Patoy hit six before for support daddy. Yeah. They used that little window of a level lead and went for it. The box was a lot of the reason those kills came down. The hook as well was great. Patoy's been good for this team. And Zig so far following up great with kills. And it's a five and a half thousand gold lead. That's massive. Yeah, and Hanser already has his Blade of the Ruined King even before 12 minutes into the game. So he's well wow. off. And Signature, oh, they want to pressure. 
the no mana sticks a the hook oh the, not quite a support Danny. that was pretty close right there but you're seeing how aggressive law pro are able to be they know they are ahead in this lane and life is just so difficult for denial down here yeah they thought that their advantage was going to be this bottom lane being together for longer with 6a and support daddy the signature and patoy are showing that they have synergized over these little weeks that they've had to prepare oh i think people are gonna be i think he'll die to heaven time i think he'll be no, but here the comes the support with the hook and lot as well they've got to be a little bit careful then out goes seika hook's not quite gonna hit good ulti to dodge that one but it's ward control a dead pink ward and law pro now controlling this blue buff good on them to play so aggressively in the enemy jungle knowing they've got that early game lead hey they're playing to their win conditions here and it's great their early game across the board is better than denials if you get ahead of them 6k gold up mm -hmm. 13 minutes in it's yeah a massive gold lead in terms of percentage in proportion in comparison to what Denial have, and they are doing exactly what they should do. Just yep. force it, push it, take their jungle, take every advantage you can. And they're staking this mid lane outer turret now down as well. It's actually one thing I, I sort of realized after commentating for a while, and I think also it's worth everyone else understanding as well, is when a team is more powerful early game, you're not just like gonna generally just like have plus 20 CS at three minutes in. It's around the eight to 10 minute mark. Like when the buffs respawn that you start taking real advantages. Because most people can like lay in a bad matchup and survive, but it's when you show up to like steal a red buff, like that that double kill we saw in the top lane a while ago. Ooh, That's when it really turns. Flash. Sticks A is not in a good spot right there. Log getting a lot of damage down, and there's the knockup, and there's the kill picked up. Now Seika is around, but the lander gonna keep him safe. And now support Daddy very close to dead. The rocket, the ulti as well, but the counter engage from W Pooh Bear. Can they knock down Signature, or do they even want to? In comes Patoy to save the day. And looks like Law Pro gonna walk away completely free on this one. More kills picked up. 2-0 so far, but can they turn it? Oh, oh my god. god, the damage on to Seika. Down he goes. Nice dash back of the wall from Lod. Knockup does not quite land on Nubby Pooh Bear, but the hook does. Does not ult for it, though. Flashing out from Nubby, but can the flay make it happen? Yes, it can. Nubby Pooh Bear, one hit from dead, and now another kill picked up. 11-1 to one for Lol Pro. That was a 4 for 0 in the overall. They get themselves a turret in the bot lane, and they are just continuing to push this Lol Pro look fierce. And Anda's got a force to regenerate under his turret. Every single lane just looks so incredibly rough for Denial. We talked about the power spikes of Law Pro being around those 12 minute marks. Having the static shiv on Yasuo, please, he completely misses that. Yeah. He still eats the Steel Tempest there, gets completely 1v1, level advantage, everything in their favor. And man, just the will to survive from Denial is just not enough against Law Pro's early game. And the fact that they're able to come up with these advantages, they continue to fight. This entire time, Lot killing the turret. Says, all right, let's rejoin this fight. Hit Stixa once, twice, multiple crits, goes back over, uses the white and his sweeping to get back over. And then he saves his ultimate. Doesn't I think he was off. expecting the hook. And then with the flay, he was like, guys, hit this. Yeah, exactly. A very small window, to be fair. Very, very tiny window. Set it up for each other. Mm -hmm. And man, just 10k gold advantage, 15 minutes in. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I feel like the game is really crumbling for Denial right now. The fact that the stick, uh, not stick, but uh, Nubby Pooh Bear and Seika actually chased down in that 2v3 or 2v4 is really evidence of, of how this game is sort of crumbling. There's no way that fight's going to work. There's no way it's a good choice, but they go in for it anyway. And they've got to learn a little bit better self control and realize that sometimes you just got to give up your jungle and not take these fights where you are sort of overpowered on, on champion power. Yeah, well, 10k gold behind is ridiculous. They're behind in champion power, item power. All these spikes are going to be so delayed for them. And the fact that they're a late game comp, they aren't going to have really any signs of life for a long time because they're going to be out-leveled on top of all of this. And Seika walks into his own jungle, sees a tornado in the front of it, pops his ulti. Lot says, I see you over there. It's red. Dies to the red buff. Oh, man. I mean, at this point, it's like, if you see him, you know he's going to fall over. Q comes out, right, the shield doesn't matter too much. Nice bubble, though. And the high fidelity void oh. use, but there's Nubby Pooh Bear. Can land the hook, but ulti, of course, not up right now. Damage still comes through. A lot of pain coming out of Nubby Pooh Bear. Heaven Time just diving down very aggressively, and now comes Zig for the backup. One for one. Damage on the support. Dead in now, but looks like Tsunami not going to fall down. Lantern keeps Zig safe. Talking about the back lines on a stick. Say Lod wants this one a little bit now, and the turret's in the way, but looks like that is a kill picked up. And more people keep falling. Haunts are now in the back lines on top of that one. He's going to flash out as well. Turret's not going to be enough for that one on top of that. And uh, trying to support what he can, but looks like Law Pro just refused to die and they keep picking up kills. Oh my god, this is 17 minutes in the game, and they're playing like there aren't even turrets around that area. Law Pro yep. so far ahead right now. 12k, 17 minutes, huge level advantages. 5-0-3, 5-0-4. That's the carries here.
for Law Pro. Those are their scores. This is such like this is such a out of hand game for denial. It really is. Look at that hook though. That was so good. Matoy moving back to support. He was on 80 carry last time we saw him, and he didn't have that great of a showing because they tried to move him around. Yep. And then they had Heartbeat in, and then they brought Signature in. This guy coming out basically from semi-retirement because he went back to school. Yeah. But this guy, you said it, he made it to regionals mm -hmm. in uh, Season 2. Yep. He's a really good player. Fine right he is. You're the seeing fact, it here. The fact that he hasn't gotten rusty at all is a big testament to his skill. And what I like as well is that Law Pro, they're winning in enough metrics. Look at his inventories. Yeah. There was another pink ward in the inventory. Actually, Patoy bought one and then uh, Hanser put one down. But they're like, guys, we're winning. Everyone invest in wards. Let's control the map. Let's close this out. They're taking it very seriously. Oh, yeah, of course. They're taking it very, very seriously. Both these teams want it desperately. Look at this. Nubby caught a little bit out. He's going to get slowed. Gets played. Ult backwards. He's going to stay safe for now. Ward goes down, but... You're seeing Lot able to take away the blue buff here. Should get that to Zig. Does so. Smart choice. And now we'll see where the push is going. Hanser still stays in the top lane. 4 1 and 1 on this Shivana. Having a pretty good time with this one. You can see Anda not able to do much there. Finally breaks the Banshee's Veil, but has to run away immediately afterwards. And the fact that they were able to just keep this mid lane matchup in Law Pro's favor is really big. Because Lot, he was losing it at the start. Because that's typically how the matchup goes, and also armor on the new Cassadin is really easy to itemize. You can get Zonia's, you can get Iceborne Gauntlet. Sure. It's perfectly fine. He hasn't completed an armor item because they kept him so far down. 0 3 1. Yeah. 119 CS. He's 60 CS down. 70 CS down at this point. Yeah, life is really rough right now if you're the Cassadin. Running on this oh. team, actually. Engage comes to Hotsu. Doesn't quite land that, though. So no last breath comes through, but all six turrets now down outside the base team. Law Pro have only given up two kills, and they've been on the back of team fights elsewhere, so it's not exactly uh, that bad of a scoreline here. The buff control has been fantastic from Law Pro all game. It's not even just the new new control. The whole team just got ahead and started investing in wards, and they are able to continue to push this advantage. Every time we see a team taking advantage, it's kind of like you have to ward the enemy jungle and yep. continue to take their buffs, because you don't just power yourself up, you stop them from gaining power. And they do exactly that on Law Pro. But you mentioned the buff control. I just got told in my ears, 10 buffs to four so far in this game. So of the 14 buffs, only four have been grabbed by Denial, and you can see that Lawpro kind of taking their name. They're denying all the buffs away. And now Baron going down before 20 minutes into the game. You can see great vision control. Look at all those little blue icons in the main off. All of those are wonderful little wards here that see that Denial are nowhere near trying to check this one. So Mordvin is going over. Make that now 11 to 4 in buffs. Actually, is that five buffs? Because it's Baron. I don't know. I know. I wonder if Dragon was inside of that too. Because I mean, it's not a buff, but it's yeah. still a neutral objective. But you know why they're able to deny all these? Well, because yeah. they're pro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I was informed that that was just buffs, not dragons. So okay. I think Baron counts as five. Five buffs were gained by killing. <laughs> I am not wrong in the slightest. Fifteen to four in buffs now. Team Law Pro, looking absolutely incredible, man. This is a team that. Again, their third seed coming into the playoffs. And we've actually seen, uh, like even from the European tournament, um, the teams were not always necessarily as good as their seeds suggested. We, we saw guys that were low seed, but we had very high expectations UOL. of. Yeah, UOL, SK Prime being the two big ones for me. Um, and Law Pro very much living up to their top three seed. They expect to make it to the promo tournament. I was actually talking with uh, Liquid a little bit earlier today. And he said he was doing a lot more uh, hands-on coaching. Liquid112, the, the Team Curse manager, if I wasn't specific there. He's like, yeah, I've been actually really hands-on with Team Law Pro. He's in the studio today to support them. He's like, you know, the main team of Curse, you know, they've got their own staff. They're fine. They're doing their own thing. But uh, Steve's been pretty hands-on with Team Law Pro here, and they are looking very good. Yeah, they're looking extremely good. And having that type of infrastructure is important. I know Denial has uh, Frank Fang mm -hmm. to be their coach, formerly of Frank Fang Gaming. True. <laughs> which made it pretty far Which is previously. then known as Wasabi Gaming, then I know. known they as kinda, they kinda uh, XDG. Kind of got rid of Frank Fang, so they couldn't keep his name in the name. Which became Gaming. Yep. <laughs> team Gaming. <laughs> team Gaming. Team Gaming Esports, what a great oh! team name, exactly. <laughs> Engage comes in, Nubby Pooper got hit by the last breath, actually. And that is some damage coming through, and it looks like everyone forced away by Heaven Time and Hanser. Forcing them back to their own Nexus while the inhibitor goes down. Team Law Pro still diving really, really hard in this game. There we go, inhibitor going down, including team inhibitor as well. Wards inside the base, I don't know how Denial can stay alive. Law Pro has complete, utter disregard for turrets and the well-being of Denial.
Yep, they just go straight in there and they take what they want. They get that inhibitor. This gold advantage is bigger than any gold advantage we've seen in 20 minutes in an LCS game. Oh my god, it's just massive. Like, Team Law Pro have been crushing the entire game long. Not much else to say. Denial went for a late game focused team. I was really surprised to see the cast in last picked. Uh, I think you, you actually spoke to it very properly, which is, hey, you know, Nubby Pooh Bear, he's a shot caller. He's going to want a very strong lane. Yeah. And, I mean, I guess you are right that, like, Kasten's not bad against Yasuo, but... No, he's, he's actually quite good. If you itemize is, him correctly, but the thing is, is he got focused. Right, well, the problem is also, is, like, it's not like Kasten does anything before level 11. Exactly. Like, anything meaningful, you know? Like, he's, maybe you bring Teleport and you counter gank, but, like, he didn't bring Teleport and counter gank, so... He's not going to crush that lane. Right. The thing. He's going to sit there and wait for a while. And I know that was their, their that was their plan, is wait for late game. Don't worry, it's going to be fine. And, uh, I mean, to be fair, some of that worked out, but Heaven Time seemed to outgank Sega. Oh, yeah. Like, Heaven Time on a new new. Yeah. Was he made more happen. Yeah. It's a factual argument. Oh, yeah. Well, if you have 10 out of the 15 kills, part of it you that you've been a part of, the kill participation for yourself is really big compared to a 1, 4, and 0. On Seika's side. And that one kill he got was up top from Hauntzer taking turret aggro from the burn. Right, right. And I mean, that was a good play by Seika. I mean, obviously, he's a very good player, but yeah, Heaven Time has the highest kill participation in the game. He's done honestly quite well for himself. He's had great ward control. He's basically 16. prevented anything from happening. Yeah, there More we go. Buffs. More buffs. Did they grab a red not long ago, though? They probably did. Okay. Still, somewhere in the teens. They can now drive a car with their buffs in the US. I don't know what the ages is elsewhere, actually, but it's a North American Challenger Series, so I get to make American. You know. Including Baron. I was told 14 to 4, including buffs, but that's Baron counting as 1, which yeah. means it's actually 18 to 1, or 18 to 4 in buffs. You guys should keep track of us better, guys in the background, giving us information. <laughs> Bottom inhibitor going to go down, though. Team Law Pro looking pretty darn good here 24 minutes in. They just took another inhibitor, and they're just looking top right now. The signature caught a little bit out, but he's just so strong. Oh, man. WP, we're forced to run away. There's the Valkyrie in every single time. Zig taking a bit of damage from Stixay, though. Maybe this is the one hold that Denial can maybe keep their base alive with. They will kill the minion wave off. It's just the, it's ridiculous. The, the end is so far away, though, from Denial. Like. It would require so many miracles. Here's the engage. Hanser goes oh, in. There's last press. Six has gone. One for zero. And the dive is on. Hanser is tanky. He's got most of a Randwin's knock up onto Anda as well. This should be the top lane inhibitor on top of this one. Dropping rather rapidly. Blood Boil making these dive really, really fast. I mean, Pooh Bear can't do much. Bubble's going to miss as well. Top lane inhibitor going to fall. And now the Super Minions, as they continue to flood in, should mean the game for Law Pro. 20,000 gold advantage, 25 minutes. This is just utterly ridiculous, Freak. I haven't seen anything quite like this in the Challenger Series just yet. I've seen teams get kind of rolled over in like 10k gold advantages, but 20k this early on yeah. is really unprecedented. The fact that Law Pro has kill advantages, item advantages, level advantages up the wazoo across the board. Oh yeah. Four in the middle. Kasten is four Jeez. levels down on Lod. The shot calling has to be utterly just crazy right now with just havoc. Yeah. There's nothing you could really do in this situation. You have to hope that Law Pro throws, throws again, and throws a third time. And then you're on equal footing. Yes. And then you got to win from there. And that's only to get equal here. So for what it's worth, Denial uh, got saved by the fact that Law Pro got injured and had to recall back to base. So at least some golden XP is going to be gained by all these dead and hips. Well, what they did, the push will be easy. Yes. Exactly. They went back. They bought all these items. They're going for the throat. They're going for that final blow with double super minions in every lane. There's a TP in from Hauntzer. Loses the Banshee's Veil, but who cares? Middle inhibitor should die rather quickly, and the minions can keep flooding on in. Nice three-man bubble, though. Can they find something? Actually, Lon very low. He's one in from dead. He gets exhausted. And then his one kill picked up. Is this maybe the comeback? Signature Valkyrie didn't force to run away. Kazan now dying. 4v4, both mid laners gone. But here are the super minions. That should be enough. I don't think Denial can kill the minion waves in time. As the turrets start going down, one is gone. Wave cutter from the top as well. This could be two turrets in very rapid succession. They force Batoy back. Tidal comes across, stops Hanser. But now the Nexus is available, and there's just not enough resources to stop the push of Law Pro. Stixay is trying. Seika is trying as well. Patoy goes down, but there's still minions inside the base. Zignatur wants to close this game out. He's going to find Stixay. It's actually Nunu who picks up the double kill, but that will be game 27 minutes in, 19 to 4. I say this in full confidence. That is the biggest goal lead at 20 I think we've seen in the Challenger Series in North America. Yeah.
hands down, that was an utterly dominating performance by Law Pro over Denial. Yep. They showed they came here to play today. They really did. These guys started out extremely strong. They came with the plan. The first pick, Nunu, was a surprise to me. I was don't expect first pick Nunu's very often here, you know, in, in the jungle, but it paid out, honestly. Heaven Time had an absolutely wonderful game. Was in the right place at the right time a lot. Early Sight Stone plus Golden Spirit had great ward coverage the whole game. And you know, honestly, it was it was a crushing game from start to finish. The lanes in isolation held pretty equal, but the ganks were on point, the roams into the jungle were on point, and every single fight that they took was good for LawPro. Yeah, it was kind of like we all just hit one item spikes together, and then LawPro did more with it. They yep. got the gank bottom, took Dragon, Lod pushed out, joined him, took a blue, just continued to do that over and over again. And mm -hmm. buff control, we talked about it. So many buffs fell into the hands. I think three times more fell into Law Pro's hands over Denial, which is just immense jungle control. Yeah. Uh, honestly, that, that's all you can really say is this is what you bring Nunu for. And this is, again, the point I wanted to flash out is when you have a team that is stronger early game, it's not just because you're going to get this 20 CS lead by 8 minutes. It's when those buffs respawn, you do something with them. You fight for the objectives that are on the map, not just Dragon, but it's every red and every blue. Or it's when you get your ultimates, you force a battle under their turret or in the lane. And that is what Law Pro did. They used their early game power in the right places to start fights. You saw Hanser try multiple times to set up Yacht ultis in the jungle, only to have Lod set himself up, for what it's worth, but um, taking these fights outside the lane when you know you're stronger, exactly what they did, and it worked out. Yeah. When laning phase ends, it doesn't mean go to another lane, it means go into the jungle. It should be the jungle phase after that. Yeah. Everybody's just getting neutral objectives, fighting over them, and they basically just flat out had better combat stats and better champions with those item spikes at the right time. That yeah. they kept them down for one second, and they're like, we're just going to shove you all the way to the ground and actually dig a hole for you and bury you afterwards. Yeah. It was ridiculous how well Law Pro played that in comparison to Denial. Absolutely. So we know Law Pro can play with advantages. They know exactly how to play the game. The one thing I will temper that with, with is that they seemed over-aggressive. I saw Zig Valkyrie in more than any other player like ever. To be fair, they were winning, and yes, he didn't really die for it very much, but actually, literally ever. He had yeah. zero deaths that game. I like looked afterwards. Um, but that is something that you can maybe capitalize on. That, okay, Law Pro can play an early game aggressive team and capitalize on a bunch of late game picks. But that is all we've necessarily seen, is that they can play that style really well so far. Um, if the Nile have a better early game team, they can capitalize on that maybe over-aggression that we were seeing by the end of the game. And I also think the Nile should just probably just play a different team comp, because they are clearly going to get snuffed out if they play this kind of comp again. Yeah, and at the same time, it is all about the compositions. Mm -hmm. Law Pro, early game comp, early game strategy, which is definitely kind of like the rock to the scissors here. If you have all the options, you're like, I'm just going to crush you. It's done. It's over. Scissors kind of sits there, goes, please, please don't crush me. And then eventually he's like, I'm just a gigantic rock crushing scissor. I don't know if those <laughs> even exist. They probably do so. No, you just got to pick paper next time around. Boom. Scissors became a really dull knife. There you go. It's just not very effective at it killing didn't rocks. didn't do anything. Yeah. The hinges were broken off. The scissors was crappy. The handle was broken. Sometimes rock gets really mad and rips through paper, though. That's true. Well, you have to wet in the paper, though, yeah. and then the rock goes right through. So if you get some synergy, you get some water in there. Hashtag rock, paper, scissor mechanics. Add water, and rock wins <laughs> all the matchups. Guys, going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's time for game two in this best of three between the Nile Esports and Team Law Pro. The 2014 Challenger Series will be right back.